Perfect. So we will be showing um, some of the updates that we've done behind the scenes on the Room Datasheets tool, which is part of the PyHelizer toolbar of uh, PyRevit. And um, we've tried this recording a while back, technical reasons, we couldn't do it. This is the second try. Maybe it's a better recording as well. So let, let, let's give that a go. So uh, the main changes that we've done since the release uh, is pretty much around layouting and how the different views that you would create uh, when using the tool um, are placed on, onto the sheet. And we've created two separate types of layouting. We call them the cross, which is the one that you see currently on the screen, which would be your plan separate, um, surrounded by the elevations of the room. The RCP will be sitting at the, at the end of the so-called cross. And for the time being, we have the AXO sitting uh, in the top right corner. Um, of course, we envision in the future that there's gonna be a schedule somewhere there and uh, maybe other information subject to to the client needs, but this is a, a, an outstanding uh, beginning uh, to start with. Of course, dipping all the while in the functionality that we had from the get-go, which is creating multiple room data sheets from a selection of rooms. So layouting, this is the cross layout, and we have another one, which is the tiles. The tiles is a, a simpler version, which is just floor plan, our um, reflect ceiling plan, and the elevation to the side of it. And now D Daria is, has the control of this presentation. <laughs> so over to you with the Revit UI and how we do all of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so on the Revit side, um, you can find this tool in Pyrtilizer tab under project room data sheets is the one that will create uh, the sheets with the views placed on them. Um, as previously, you can um, select one or multiple rooms for this. You can run it all on your entire floor. And uh, to talk a little bit about the UI and what each of these means, um, here you have the all of the various settings that let you customize your layout. Uh, you can select from the title block. Um, picking up all the title blocks that um, are loaded in your model. Um, the sheet number is just the number of the sheet uh, that is going to be created. Uh, the crop offset is the value uh, of the offset from the room boundary. So if you imagine that if your room ends here, your crop offset will offset outwards with this value. So. Um, in, in, we, we had a, um, a request by a client of ours that didn't want any offset so that the boundary of the floor plan and uh, elevations is just tight to the room. So then you give it a, a, an offset of zero and that's uh, how you can achieve it. Yes. Uh, so it's up uh, for you to customize. Um, the same value is applied to elevations as well. Um, and then the next one, the title block internal offset is the value of um, the width of this title block uh, that is needed to calculate um, the remaining space on the sheet and figure out where to place this views. Uh, so based on your company standards, you will probably have this value the same throughout your project. And this is just the width of uh, of this title block. Yeah, and that you can would, that you can specify, and it would apply to either the vertical or horizontal. So this control is a little bit further down, exactly. So let's say you have the title block not as you see on the screen, but there is a common standard which you have the landscape version of that. So the horizontal, sorry, version of that. Again, you will have the same thickness, the band of the title block measured by this uh, title block internal offset. So um, yeah. maybe, maybe uh, last time what we did was explain a little bit about, um, because this is the one of the main uh, changes from before, sitting behind this cross and tile orientation mm -hmm. is, is um, a structure of four columns by three rows. So this is the offset that we spoke about earlier as measured in the sheet space. And here we have basically those one, two, three, four columns and three rows, and these are equal. And in the middle of each of those columns, um, we will we will place elevations or yeah, 
all the, the, the different views basically. Same thing would happen in uh, in height. This would be identical. Yeah, exactly. So in be in the middle of each row, we will also place uh, one of the views. Going back to the UI. Um, Let's do another. Um, here, if you choose cross, you if you choose the cross layout orientation, you have the possibility of rotating your elevations. Um, this would look something like this. So if you want your side elevations to be rotated 90 degrees um, to coincide with the edges of the room, you can choose to do that. Um, you can also tick elevations and sections to pick, um, to choose your elevations to be created as with using the section tool. Yep, a section rather than elevations. Yeah. Um, that's really it on this part yeah obviously we've now because we're creating plans uh, ceiling plans and elevations we need to be able to specify the view templates for each of those i think we're still missing like last time the axo view template yeah, which yeah. we will incorporate at some point yes, obviously yes. um yeah the, the final one that we've introduced is the type of viewport um that's done mainly for your ability to choose no type, no no, no line, which is yeah. if uh, you choose the no title, um, everything would be placed really nice and uh, tidy on your screen. Um, anything else, you're risking the automatic behavior of how this line is positioned according to the viewport. So yeah, of course you can try and see what's going to happen for each of those. Um, the view templates, I just want to mention that view templates are a great possibility to control the looks of your uh, views. And uh, this way you can control the sections. You can also hide the unnecessary categories that you don't want to see. Um, and it can be very helpful to do so because these unwanted categories can distort the boundaries of your view such as if you have a very long section that is crossing and is visible in one of the elevations, um, then the position of uh, this view on the sheet may not be as accurate yeah. as you want it to be. So hiding this view with the help of view templates um, is a good tip to follow. Um, you can always enable it later and it would uh, you know, conform to the, to the crop. So yes. that would be a great workflow. And finally, what we've done is uh, the UI is persistent across the sessions, so it will remember whatever settings you're you're using, which is, yeah. It is a great improvement to the everyday um, experience of using this tool because you don't have to select every single time. It will remember your last choice. And as you can see, if you remember the last version, the, the UI has grown a lot. We're still using PyRevit's native uh, forms for that, and it's still doing a great job. If it, if it grows a little bit more, maybe we do go and uh, create a custom WPF form, uh, but it still does the job great, which again, showcase how, how cool PyRevit is out of the box. Okay, shall we run it? Up. Yeah, you speed that one. And you'll see the result. See the result. Um, yeah, this room is smaller and based on your project, you may pick a different view template, maybe with a bigger, um, scale uh, to position it better um, but as you see they've been positioned in this cross layout um, more or less aligned to each other the plan has been cropped to the outlines of the room yep. so you, you don't get anything else outside of it only the featured crop okay well thank you so much for joining us um that was with the room data sheets and we'll keep you updated uh for in our next moves.